Welcome to the Legacy Building Leaders TV show, where we listen and profile the stories of legacy building leaders, game changers, and solution providers who have made an impact in our society. Today, we are privileged to be joined by Mr. Klopas Chiketa, the newly elected president of the Institute of People Management of Zimbabwe and the Deputy Director of Human Resources at the Reserve Bank, who sits on many boards uh, that include the Africa Executive Coaching Council. Greetings to you viewers. Thank you very much for coming on to this program. My name is Klopas Chiketa. I'm a business executive coach. I'm an HR practitioner. And just to share my story or my narrative uh, with you today, I grew up and born in the Midlands province of Zimbabwe, in Gokwe, and uh, I started my primary education in that uh, land. And then I moved on to Gweru, where I continued with my primary education, and I moved on to uh, Mvuma, where I also did my secondary education. I did my high school in, in, the, in, the, in the zone of Kwekwe, uh, Rio Tindo Jombe High School. And then I went into the Midland State University where I started my program uh, in human resource management. As I was growing up, I remember uh, spending time with my mom. And my mom was more like uh, my first uh, person to more like trigger some critical virtues in me as a young child and also wanting me to succeed. I'm born the only child. Uh, and in that regard, uh, she wanted to get the best out of me. Uh, so she spent a lot of time sharpening me and uh, also telling me about several issues around life, how I should be managing it. And she became more like a buddy to me because we were spending time together. I didn't have siblings and she was playing that particular ro critical role in my life. I also spent a second segment of my life with my dad. Uh, my mom was in the rural area and my dad was in Gweru and we stayed with my dad uh, in my late primary education uh, into secondary. And also I liked what my dad was doing. He was more like pushing me. He would not want me to spend a lot of time playing, but he wanted me to demonstrate diligence and uh, spend time doing my books. And he continued to drive me and say, I'm expecting the best out of you. And uh, that really gave me a lot of um, drive to take on the challenge as the only child. I also were looking at uh, the extended family because in the African context, the extended family becomes very critical in our, in our development. I was observing one of my father's elder brother's child who was doing quite well. His name was Flavian Sungwa. And uh, we were looking at him and we were looking up to him because he was doing well in the police force. And I saw some great achievements coming out of uh, what they were doing in the business circles. And I said, when I grow up, I would want to become like one of them. And uh, that yearning continued to, to, to occupy my life. I had bitter experiences that I, I went through, but these bitter experiences were more like shaping me to be able to build resilience, to be able to build capabilities to develop myself into the next level. As I was doing my degree program, I embarked on an, uh, a number of other programs. I remember doing my diploma in training management with the Institute of People Management uh, Institute of Personal Management then, and uh, I was studying. I remember I would wake up, get uh, I would wake up around ten. I would sleep at six p.m. Wake up, wake up around ten or eleven, and I would begin to read up to the next morning because I was doing multiple pro pro programs at the same time. So I, I I found value in what I did during that time because I had the time and I was supposed to utilize the time. And I began to utilize that time, did a lot of programs. I did my Institute of Bengals diploma when I was still in college and I, 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 I continued with it even after college. And I did many other programs within that time. I did a lot of programs around performance management, around training management. 
I was trained in the management development program. I became the best student under the 2008 uh, management development program of Delta Corporation. Uh, and I was also promoted three times within the Delta system, uh, just in a short period from 2005 when I joined them to 2010 when I left them. I had occupied three roles and I ended up as a junior executive within their system. And I continued to, to learn a lot of programs under the Gordon Institute of Business Science, uh, Pre University of Pretoria Business School. And I did a program in expert negotiation and many other programs that I did during that time. I also want to thank Econet Wireless for what they did in my, in my tenure with them. I was developed in knowledge, knowledge management. I was developed uh, in a number of programs to do with uh, facilitation that I also embarked on. They supported me in that process. And to me, that was quite uh, critical. When I joined uh, Tel One, they also developed me in the area of telecoms. So I did uh, effective telecom strategies. I did um, telecoms mini, mini MBA with Tel One uh, under the, um, the partnership that we had established with Informa Business School in the, in the Informa Business Academy, uh, which is a telecom center in the UK. And that assisted me to be able to manage and also to develop myself. As Dr. Covey says, highly effective people keep on sharpening the saw. So I cherish those moments where I was in my rural area, heading cattle, getting into the fields. I know my mom would push me to get into the fields, but I didn't enjoy a lot of uh, this work in the fields. But uh, at the end of the day, as I was going through this experience, uh, where she was waking me up in the morning to be able to go into the field and do some work, I saw that that nurtured certain things in me to be able to uh, look at time management, to be able to look at what you need to achieve even in a day to say when you get into the field, what are you supposed to be doing? And to me, that added a lot of value that is even assisting me even today as a professional in my field. And it's critical that uh, we also hook onto our past, look at what we have gone through and begin to mine some great experiences out of that. We've listened to the story of Mr. Klopas Chiketa starting from Gokwe and building all the way to become an internationally recognized leader. Legacy building leaders are influencers. They impact and inspire the next generation of leaders. And Ms. Klopas Chiketa has done a lot of work in terms of empowering young leaders. Today he's joined by Anut Daeshe and Tabonga in the next segment. Greetings to you Mr. Chiketa. Greetings. My name is Anut Daeshe Jangare. I learn at West Owl School. Looking at your profile, you have so many achievements and positions in various organizations and communities. What motivated you to where you are now, and what advice would you give to the young people out there to, to use the same ladder you used? Thanks very much, Anotid uh, I would just use some quick examples, practical in terms of my life. I would tell you that in, 20, in 2012, I desired to serve in a global board, I think. I wanted to join what is called the International Association of Facilitators, which is based in the US. So at the end of the day, my desire to serve in that, in that board uh, saw me trying to join them and failing first time. And in the second time, I was able to meet with uh, some of the founders of that institution uh, in Switzerland. Uh, ultimately, they allowed me to join their board. I became a board member or a, a director of membership and chapters and served that institution. Uh, secondly, I, I would also share with you in 2017, somewhere there, I crafted a vision to say I wanted to see myself uh, becoming a, a coach in Africa. And my vision was to say when people talk about coaching in Africa, I also want my name to feature. Uh, today I serve uh, under the Africa Executive Coaching Council as a board member. So it was coming out of this passion and also setting a clear vision to say where do I want to land? And in that regard, what do I say to young people? Craft a vision of where you want to land and you find that your chances of landing there are very high. Greetings to you, sir. Greetings. My name is Tawanga Shinoriri, and I'm a senior prefect at Nyasme College. From you, I'd like to know how your human resources, coaching, and management skills have been able to put impact in organizations 
of various sectors? I would say coaching is becoming a strategic lever for organizations. I remember uh, uh, by working with leaders in the Delta Corporation Group and beginning to set coaching structures within their system. And uh, leaders would sit with their, their own subordinates and begin to run with them in a coaching engagement. And we were, I was training line managers as coaches, and they would also coach their own teams. Uh, I did the same for the Econet Wireless Group, that is your Econet Wireless, um, Tara Bottling, uh, Higher Life Foundation, and uh, Stewart Bank, as well as uh, now Cassava, but it was called Econet Services. And the traction that was gathered out of that process was quite high. And uh, we saw results, we even measured the return on investment uh, of uh, such interventions and we saw that there was a greater value that was brought to the organization coming out of coaching. Today, uh, I know uh, as I served even Tel One and even currently at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, I am working with leaders in, a, in coaching engagements and I've seen tremendous value coming out of these engagements. Today, I'm, I'm leading the Institute of People Management as president and I would say to you that it's critical we have seen HR practices transforming institutions uh, over the years and we continue to reinvent and invent new mechanisms of doing that. As the coronavirus pandemic continues to evolve, the damage to the job market looks likely to be affected the most, especially to the workers. What advice would you give to the organizations facing these challenges? The COVID-19 pandemic came on board, it brought shock to the, to the global village. There is need to look at the business imperative, there is also need to look at issues to do with the people. So at the end of the day, there is need to strike this delicate balance between business survival and also uh, assisting organizational members, which are your staff members. So uh, there is need to balance those dynamics, but making sure that there is sustainability at the end of the day, organizations will continue to move uh, into, into, into perpetuity, but at the same time, staff members also being assisted. I know it, when the pandemic started, I was um, uh, afraid, I was uh, looking at it as a challenge, but at the same time, I saw that there are opportunities within it. So at the end of the day, people need to say, how do I reinvent myself to be able to be relevant in that space? How do I become agile to be able to uh, sustain myself in, the, in, the, in what we call the normal now? So we need to say, how do we navigate, how do we enterprise to be able to, do, to, to, to sustain ourselves and our families in this dynamic environment, is in, in this changing environment. Uh, being a pastor, I'm, 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 I'm encouraged by the Bible, which says that a, 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 wise, a wise man lives an inheritance to uh, his children's children. So at the end of the day, we need to build sustainable uh, heritages for generations to come. And that can only come when we move out of our comfort zones, when we begin to think uh, seriously about what we are seeing in the environment and also saying, how do we get to succeed in that environment? The pandemic has seen major changes in this country, including the business sectors. From your own perspective, how has the, how has the new remote policies been effective to employers and employees. Thank you very much. So I know people were talking about working from home as we began uh, issues of remote working and uh, we entered a zone where we were talking about living at work, which means that the dynamics are changing. A person is living at, at, their, at their house, but their house has become the workplace. And in that regard, they are living at work. But remote working has been working even in other countries over, over the years. I remember visiting a colleague of mine in the UK uh, in 2019 and they, he, was, he would just rise and say, I'm getting into my workspace within the same house. Uh, and we will not talk to him for the whole day. And the family had been disciplined in that regard. So uh, it's something that is not new. It has been tried elsewhere. It, is, it has worked and it will continue to work. And wherever we are going now, we need to be working around this. And um, it's about dealing with mindsets. It's about more like shifting uh, people's mindsets around you are working, you need to deliver. Where you are does not matter. But what matters is what, what is your output coming out of uh, wherever you are operating from. You need to deliver results 
working from anywhere. Even yourselves, as you are learning, I think you are seeing the landscape is changing and you need to be delivering results wherever you're working from and wherever you are um, uh, learning from. We have witnessed that inspiration flowing from Mr. Chiketa as he has been engaging with the next generation of leaders. In the last segment, we are going to look at the anatomy of the legacy building leadership story of Mr. Klopas Chiketa. Uh, Mr. Chiketa, allow me to start by congratulating you uh, on your election as the president of the Institute of People Management of Zimbabwe. Looking at your leadership journey, <clears throat> it's, it's very clear that you have been uh, privileged to be exposed to provide service and leadership in the, some of the top companies in this country, blue chip companies, um, which is unusual for someone to be exposed to quite a number of them, you know, at the same time, at different uh, seasons of, of your life. But I also noticed that you have learned a lot. You have got a very solid, you know, profile and so much exposure you know, of learning not only academically, but also professionally, both locally and internationally. What is the place of learning in leadership development? Thank you very much, Doc. I think you ask a very profound question there when I look at it, because um, I'm taken to a triad of learning that I, I usually talk around when I teach leaders around personal brand effectiveness. You, you, you have three, three areas of learning or three sources of learning. Right. You learn from people, mm -hmm. you learn from literature, and you learn from experience. I have learned from literature. Uh, there is a former CEO of mine. He was saying you need to read because uh, one authority says that good leaders are readers. So during those days, he was saying you would read about two chapters of a business book every day. I was challenged. I said I need to learn this. I began to look for business books and um, learn from them. Secondly, learn from people. Identify mentors because you find that generally you find in, uh, in, in, in success stories that I've seen, people have been mentored by someone. It is critical that we mine from different leaders that we work with. Uh, you work with a line manager, they are automatically your mentor. But at the same time, identify other mentors within your sphere of influence and they will be able to take you through the journey and show you the paces and that will assist you. And then lastly, exposure. I think you, you highlighted a lot of uh, issues around that. I remember when I joined the IAAF as a director of membership and chapters, I was taken into Tokyo, Japan. And uh, we spent a week in there and we were learning around that particular area. And uh, we learned a lot of things out of the Japanese culture their diligence, uh, their focus. And we also learned the criticality of virtues or values within their system. Because you find that when you go into Japan, people respect their leaders. Uh, but at the same time, they have consensus decision making. They, they, they work with each other. The issues of teamwork. And I remember as I was just reflecting, I was looking at our own culture in Zim, where people would do nimbers, and these would be uh, configuring issues of teamwork. So you need to learn from, from those three sources of learning. Now, let's, let's, let's look at issues of um, human resource practitioners yes. and leadership. Uh, we come to the IPMZ, Institute of People Management of Zimbabwe. Yes. Um, what, what's the role of the Institute in terms of uh, not only human capital development, but leadership and influence, because this is very key when we look at where we are. Uh, if we look at every organization, every institution throughout the country, the greatest resource that any institution has are people. Yeah. It's people. What's the role of IPMZ, you know, in terms of uh, human capital development in the nation and leadership and influence? You ask a very key question there. Uh, IPM plays a very critical role in the nation in terms of building leadership capacity and also making sure that the people management landscape is safe. So IPM is there to build people management 
specialists who will come in and provide strategic support to organizations. So when organizations begin to put at the center stage human resource management and also leadership philosophies that would assist organizations to evolve, they will succeed. Uh, so when you go global, you find that organizations that have uh, placed emphasis on leadership philosophies and driving the people agenda, uh, you would find that they have always been successful and achieving great results for themselves. And, 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 and what are the greatest challenges that um, you know you face, for example, now as the IPMZ, and, and how do you intend to resolve them? especially as we also look at uh, contributing to nation building and the critical role that you have in the different institutions and organizations within our nation. So you'll find that when I look at the space, the space is changing. We, we have COVID-19 that has come on, on board and we, it, it's a different uh, set of skills that are required. So when, I, when you look at the Asia landscape, you'll find that even when you look at the World Economic Forum in terms of what they are studying, uh, in terms of the skills, that skills of the future, they were looking at organizational development, which is a, a critical part of the, the HR people. And they are saying it's going to be leading in the future. So what does that mean? It means an HR professional of today need to be changing their skill sets. They need to be transforming themselves into becoming uh, strong OD professionals. And when we talk organizational development skills, we're talking skills around building leaders, skills around uh, building teams, skills around managing disruption, skill, skills around how do you make organizations agile through business process re-engineering and so forth. Right. And it's quite urgent that we begin to re retool ourselves in terms of that particular, uh, those particular skills. And uh, that's the role of the institute, and we need to be playing that. That's our challenge. Yes. When all is said and done, Mr. Chiketa, your legacy, what do you want to be remembered for? So what I want to be remembered for is for building great leaders that, 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 would, that, that, would, that transformed organizations, that transformed nations at the end of the day. We have been listening to the inspiration and empowerment flowing from the legacy building leadership story of Mr. Klopas Chiketa. The journey that he has walked all the way from his beginnings in Gokwe and working and serving in blue chip companies in Zimbabwe, learning and getting qualifications at different places professionally and academically and the kind of impact and influence that he is having a true legacy building leadership story. If you know anyone out there who has got a story that can inspire and empower others, please get in touch with us on the details that are on, our, on the screen. And for the next episode of the Legacy Building Leadership Story, please join us next Friday at 5.30 p.m. <music>